What's going on everybody? Welcome back. We are in the shop right now because we're going to make this double trim router table. I got my plans right here and if you guys download these plans you'll know there's not actually too many parts and that's good because I don't have all that much plywood left over. Plywood's expensive, so let's use some scrap up. As mentioned, I'm using some scrap plywood, but if you need to buy new sections of plywood, you can build this really with one section of a project panel. That's a two by four foot piece of plywood that you can get at your home center. But in the plans that I have, I actually have two pieces because it's really best to use a couple of half inch pieces for the fence to allow proper airflow for the dust collection portion. I started out by marking out one of the sides using my plans so that we could go over to the bandsaw to cut that side out. Now I'm going to be doing a trace of this board so that I can get it absolutely perfect repeatably. Now do you have to do it this way? Absolutely not. But the process is over on the bandsaw I cut out the main section of waste and then I fine tune that at the spindle sander. You did just notice that I cut through my off cut and that's just to save time so that I don't have to carefully trace backwards through the blade to get the blade out of the workpiece. Just a quick little time saver there. Now we're over at the oscillating spindle sander. We're going to get those cuts absolutely perfect so that we can then transition over to the router table where I'm going to use a router that has a tracer bearing on it. So we are going to take the other side that I did cut out the waste, not being very careful to get close to the line, I just kind of generally cut that waste out. And then we are going to use double sided tape to tape down that first portion that we sanded out absolutely perfectly and then use the router bearing to trace that second piece and get it absolutely perfect. This is a quick way to make repeatable parts over and over. And I do understand that I'm using a router table and if you're making this as your main router table, you don't have to do it this way. It is time to start cutting some grooves and some holes into what is gonna be the top of the router table. I'm going to have some T-track in the front so we can make little fences and I'm gonna have a couple of pieces of T-track going this way so that the fence for the router table can move in there as well. We'll also stick one into the fence, but we'll get to that later. This happens to be exactly three quarters of an inch. I have a three quarter inch router bit in my router. Now, Tyler, why aren't you using the router table, which is behind you guys right here? Now, I'm kind of assuming if you're gonna make this, maybe you don't have a router table. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with a freestanding router and a straight edge right here to put these grooves in. We first need to measure across our router and the bit and see what our greatest reach is. About three and three eighths. So three and three eighths. And then we want our T-track to be two inches off the edge. So I'm gonna go five and three eighths. That's where we're gonna clamp this in place and we'll run our router right down here. I do gotta say, it's been a while since I've used this router and I forgot how stable this heavier router is compared to the trim routers. And having the mass of that three quarter inch blade with the half inch collet really, really made these cuts very, very smooth. Now, I did not take the cut at full depth pass. I worked my way up to that using the metal T-Track as my final depth gauge. And as you can see, we got that depth pretty much nailed. Nice. And after that, we're pretty much going to repeat the process for the two sections of T-Track that we're going to add that is going to allow the fence to easily slide forward and back, giving us a straight edge to follow to allow us to route using our double trim router table. Much the same process. I did the cuts in a couple of passes, so I didn't have to take a full depth pass. Did one side and then flipped over and did the other side. Now we need to cut a couple of big old squares in here, which is where the routers are actually going to pass through the tabletop. So I measured out those squares, drilled a hole so that I could get a jigsaw blade in there, 
and then cut out those squares. Now, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because these aren't going to be holding anything in place per se. They are just to allow the router to pass through. And then we need to offset and put a rabbit in place half inch all the way around those squares that we just cut. My process for doing this was to double-sided tape a template into place and then use a quarter inch straight blade on my trim router to cut that offset. If I would have had a more proper top bearing router bit, I would have done it, but the one that I had was a little bit too deep and did not allow me to do the quarter inch depth of cut that I wanted and which you will want as well because we are using a quarter inch piece of acrylic for the router plate and this will just drop into place and hold the routers where you want them to go. So the top is done and now we're going to move over to the miter saw station and use the block and my little extension piece right here because we have a piece that is shorter than the minimum 16 inches that I can use my stop block for. What we're doing right now is we are cutting what is going to be the feet of the sides and this is going to allow you or I to fasten this router table into place and then we are going to be doing the cross supports that go across the back. Both of these parts and the sides need some pocket holes which is how we are going to assemble this router table. Do you need a Craig Foreman to do this job? Absolutely not. You can use the $30 Craig R3. It's just going to take you a couple more seconds to complete and you might have a little bit more wood chips and sawdust laying around. Be very conscious and make sure you put your pocket holes on the top portion of the side. So you can see I had to actually look at my angles as well and make sure I got that correct. For the assembly we're going to be adding a little bit of wood glue and then we are going to be using one and a quarter inch coarse pocket screws to fasten the feet into place on the sides. Again, make sure you got your angles right. If you did it right, you will have pocket holes at the top area of your sides, as you can see on the bench just before. And this is what you're going to do. And you obviously need two of these, one for each side. And be conscious and have the pocket holes inside the table so that you don't have to see them uh, when you're looking from the side of the table. We wanna hide that inside so we don't have to see the unfinished pocket holes. And then we're going to be using another one of those sections that we just drilled the holes in to fasten the two sides together. And now we have our router table base. And we do need to attach this to the top as well. And uh, pay attention, the sharp-eyed viewers will probably notice that I actually have it backwards right here. So I fastened the top on backwards. So the strip that we put in with the T-Track that will allow us to put a feather board in place or run a little miter gauge through there was on the wrong side. So I changed that off camera so you guys didn't have to watch me undo that one. But just a word of warning to make sure you're doing it right. Once you got that top fastened in place and everything is nice and stable, it is time to put our T-Track into place. Now, you can cut aluminum with your woodworking tools as long as you're not trying to cut a ton of it. It, uh, it was pretty shiny, so I had to make sure my alignment was just right, and I actually put a little dot with a permanent marker so that I can make sure I was cutting my pieces once, as I especially didn't have extra of this T-Track as I had to get the pieces shipped in. Real quick, I skipped over right there using a chisel to chisel out the rounded area that was left over from the router bit on the left side of this T-Track. But I just used a chisel to do that to make sure that I had a nice square end for this T-Track to fit in place. And I was using a self-centering VIX bit to make sure I drilled the holes for this T-Track installation right in the middle of the holes that were already in the T-Track so that the alignment wasn't pushed off to one side or the other. I also am going to be adding a couple of screws that I can manually adjust in or out to make sure that the level, the top level of the acrylic we're gonna put in place and the top of the router table is perfectly smooth. I did drill holes before screwing these into place to make sure I didn't crack that quarter inch section of wood that was in the way off of there. 
Now let's make the router place real quick. This was quarter inch acrylic that I had shipped in from Amazon. Again, just like the aluminum, you can cut this easily on your tools that you have ready to go. And I just kind of made sure I had a really nice fit, especially towards the front and the back because you don't want this to jostle around as if you are using the fence, that is gonna make the placement of the router bit different if it does jostle around a little bit. And then I used the base that came with the trim routers that I'm going to be using to mark out where I need to drill holes to fasten the router, ba router base to this plate. I am using the rigid trim routers because I had one and I only had to go out and purchase an additional one to, to assemble the, completely this router table. But you can obviously use any trim router that you want as long as you adjust this acrylic plate to what you have. I don't have anything about these plates in the plans, so you will have to trace the router base that comes with your router onto this plate. I did countersink and drill through so that the holes and the screws will be flush and not protrude from the table, and then I used a giant step bit to drill out the main hole where the router bit will pass through. You will notice this is a cordless trim router, which I suppose you could do cordless routers in this router table if you wanted to, but I only did it so I could actually set everything up and I ended up going getting another corded trim router. Now let's assemble the fence real quick. As you can see, the base plate and this vertical portion are three quarter inch pieces of plywood that were cut down and I am just using the physical placement of the router to mark out and we're going to cut some notches in the top and the side piece which is how the dust collection is going to work. Now this is where you could make all the fence out of three quarter inch pieces of plywood and that's really gonna save you a little bit of cash by only having to buy one project panel. I cut those notches out using the jigsaw and then we're going to fasten it in place, fasten the two pieces together with some wood glue. We're going to temporarily nail it together with 18 gauge brad nails and then we will go countersink some holes and screw in some one and a quarter inch screws to make sure everything is fastened and nice and square. You do want to move along here because you don't want that wood glue to set up right away and honestly it would be best to not actually fasten the screws all the way tight because we're going to use the back section of this fence which is the double dust collection ports to make sure that that fence is perfectly square. Originally mine wasn't perfectly square so when I put this back section into place that allowed me to hold the front section very perpendicular to the bottom section. So I actually had to loosen the screws to make sure I could make that adjustment. So just move along so the glue doesn't set up, fasten your back into place, fasten everything down, and you should be good to go. A couple of things to finalize our fence. I do want to add a piece of T-Track on the top of the fence so that we can put some stops into place that will slide back and forth and easily adjust in there. And then we got to get a shop vac or a dust collector connected. So I cut a section of a shop vac fitting down on the bandsaw, mark that out on the back box of our fence, cut it out with the jigsaw so that we had good airflow through here. And I put some weather grade silicone in there and a couple of screws to hold that into place while that silicone set up. And then you can see we have a great shop vac fitting right there and the dust collection will flow through the two sections that we just cut. Lastly, we got to drill a couple of holes, make sure they're in the proper place. And these will accept the bolts that go into the T-Track and allow us to move the fence back and forth. Make sure you have a little bit of play here. Otherwise, if you get the fence a little cockeyed, it'll kind of get stuck. So you want it to slide back and forth well. And this is why we put that T-Track on the top of the fence, because now we have some stops that can easily slide back and forth if we need to do like a stopgap rabbit or something like that on this router table.
You might have been wondering why we wanted the feet on the bottom of this router table and in my case I'm putting it on my double flip top station so this will actually go upside down at some point in time so I needed to make sure it was fastened into place. And I also embedded some neodymium magnets where the router wrench was so that it can flip over as well and it's not going to fall onto the floor and slide under this workstation and I will never see it again. And a quick little demonstration to show you how the whole process works. We got a round over bit on the router on the right, and then we can quickly drop that router down, move the router on the left up, which has a 45 degree chamfer bit. And now you get a great shot of my elbow as I use that 45 degree chamfer bit, but it does work. Dust collection's not so awesome, but it was very sweet to be able to switch back and forth so quickly. Well, that is a wrap there on the double trim router table. The concept seems to work very well. The dust collection seems to be lacking a little bit. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there. Maybe we just need a little bit more volume of airflow through those ducts to help pull in that dust. Maybe I need to shut one of those ports down. As you can see, I finally have three devices on my double flip top workstation, which I've had for a long time. And for the longest time, I only had this sander on there. So. But now we got the double router on there, we got the Craig Foreman, and we have the rigid oscillating sander on there. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to build this, there are plans for that. Link in the description below. If you enjoyed it, please hammer that thumbs up button as it helps us out and gets this video in front of more eyes. I'm DIY Tyler. You guys have a good one.